Welcome to the Driveway Beers Podcast with Mike and Alex. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the show. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share on any platform that you're listening on. All right, welcome back to another episode. Thank you for coming back. As always, please like, subscribe, comment, and share wherever you listen to us on. Please share share this show with a friend. Um, the handshake agreement is you either subscribe or follow us on any of the platforms you listen to. Share it with a friend, and you get all this content for free. Um, want to thank our sponsors, Cheers and Spirits in the Arnold Station Plaza in Arnold, Maryland. Great place to pick up uh, some wines that you're interested in. Uh, they're always there. They're always helpful, especially if you don't know what you're looking for like me. Uh, you're always able to go in there and uh, just get a good recommendation from the people in there. Um, so do what I do. Head on into Cheers and Spirits in the Arnold Station Plaza in Arnold, Maryland. Uh, have them recommend you a wine to give as a gift or give for your significant other. And they will not let you down. And also want to thank Brian Chilling of Long & Foster Real Estate, 145 Main Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Uh, phone number is 410-263-3400. I've said this before. He's my, He was my real estate agent when we bought this house. And I couldn't have asked for a better experience. Um, you know, when some people ask uh, why they shouldn't just use Redfin or some of those online brokers, and it's because you know when you go with a Redfin, they're, they're just going to send someone to let you in the house. They're really not going to be able to tell you anything about the house, about the area, what the uh, local market is like. Whereas when you go with someone like Brian, uh, not only... Does he have a trained eye as far as what you're looking for when you go in the house? But when you go and actually try and make an offer on a place, um, he's going to try and get you the best deal possible. And when you're selling your place, he's going to price it right. And he's got so many contacts in the industry that you'll have people walking through your home before it even goes on the market. So it pays to go with some experience. So give Brian a call and go check out his website at AnnapolisHomeExperts.com. So what are we talking about today? Well, going to have a few things to talk about because back to school, of course, um, we're seeing the same same fun issues that we saw last year with the pickup and drop-off lines. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> just when we thought we could get away from stupidity, well, we whole, found it. A whole new crop comes in. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's amazing to me. Now, I will give them this. Last year, the, how bad the traffic was in and, around, in and around the school was, that didn't happen. So, and this, you know, the our neighborhood is, I think the front entrance to our neighborhood is a half mile from the, from the school. And traffic would back up so bad from it that you, like, the cars would be stopped in front of our neighborhood. Like, it was just better to just park and walk. This year that didn't happen though, so I'll give them that because they kind of figured that out. But you still have the the people getting out of the cars, the people who whose kids put their they put the kids backpacks in the trunk of the car, and then the kids are in their ejection seat safety seat you know car seats in their you know nineteen point harnesses that need to be extracted from there, and then the kids get out, and then the backpacks are in the trunk, and they're just holding up the line. So uh, I've always been a strict you know hey. Slow down, tuck and roll, kid. Right. <laughs> like, I, I just find, I find it hysterical that you're going to put your kid in the car pickup line, but you have to take the backpack off the kid? Like, you can't even let him take his own backpack off? Yeah. Like, that. Yeah. Like, so they're taking the backpack off the kid, carrying the bag for the kid, opening the door for the kid. Why not just pick him up and put him in the seat while you're at it? Mm-hmm. And then do all the buckles. You know, it's like, are you going to not teach your kid how to do anything for themselves? No. 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 We're going to do everything for them. Yeah. So. Because well, because how else you would be codependent with your kid? <laughs> well, true. <laughs> true. I, and you know some of it is that. Like, they're going to be like, oh, well, what if it was a miracle baby? And they're just so happy to have them. Or. It's their last baby going through elementary school, and they just want to have all the time. Yeah. And look, I get it, right? However, 
once you pull onto the property of the school, traffic's not moving that fast. Right. So even when mine were, now I have a little, little one who's going in there, to, who's starting there now, but when the oldest one was little, little, and I'd pull up, I'd be like, all right, I, I, we do the old airborne thing. <laughs> you know, stand up, hook up. <laughs> right. And it was pretty much like, stand up, get your backpack on, and we'd be pulling through the drive through and he'd be standing on the, you know, and the second I could, they were like, stop, open the doors. I was like, all right, go. It was a game. Like, it was, you know, um, right. and like, you know, if I had a couple of his friends with him from the neighborhood that would go, they would be, you know, would be like, stand up, hook up, shuffle to the door, <laughs> and they'd all do it. It was fun. <laughs> so, um, but that's how we, and they were in kindergarten, first grade. Right. <laughs> they survived. The funny part was if, if they go into the classroom singing it, and the teacher's <laughs> like, what the heck? What are you going to war? <laughs> you know, but I mean, like, you have a kindergartner now. Like, this is your last one going through kindergarten. Yeah. He's able to walk to the car by himself. He gets in the car by himself. Yeah, he straps himself in. He gets himself in. Yeah. Like, a kindergartner. Yeah. There are some fourth and fifth graders. Oh, yeah. that are getting the full princess and prince treatment. Yeah, at some point, you have to be like, child, get in the car. Yes. Uh, there was a, a last year, there was a lady that her video went viral and she was complaining about this whole thing. And she's like, child, I'm not stopping for you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, right on. I was like, don't. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, school opening, it, se- it seems to have gone well. At least with my, my kid seems to like it. Likes their class, likes the teachers, all this, all this crap. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, yeah, mind being boys don't tell me anything. So. Sure. Well, how school? Fine. Okay. <laughs> but it's stuff. And me being a dude doesn't ask further. So <laughs> correct. Then my wife asked me, like, "What? Well, how was the first day of school?" They said it was fine. Well, what else did they say? They said it was fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, do you didn't ask anything else? Nope. Nope. Because <laughs> if he wanted to volunteer more information, he would have. And then the littlest one, like at preschool, we pick him up. How was your day at school? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Right. You be in your mood. You be. Yeah. <laughs> I see you need to calm yeah. down. Okay. okay. Okay, grumpy cat. <laughs> right. Now, I've got daughters. So, I get, I hear, like, my entire three-minute to five-minute ride home is all chatter right. all the time. I don't ask questions. It's just coming at me. Yeah. Which is great, but then my wife asked me. She's like, "So how 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 do they do?" Like she's texting me because she's still at work. Yeah. So how how did it go? And I'm like, fine. Yeah. So like I'm giving her the answers. Your boys are giving to you. Yeah. And she's like, "Well, did she say anything?" Probably. She said a lot of things. She, right. There was a lot coming at me that I just didn't. I just didn't download. Right. <laughs> I, I didn't get it all. <laughs> like I feel like I need like one of those court stenographers to like take notes for me, yeah. So I can read it later. Because, Let the record reflect. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, it's just it's like all the information at once. It's almost like when the kids are like three or four, and like you, they go to preschool or whatever, and you get it all. Yeah. It doesn't matter. At boys and girls, probably you get you just get it. It just comes out like a yeah. big old all of it, and it's like uh huh uh huh. Because you know none of it, it, it. It's fine. Teddy bears and rainbows. That's what yeah. preschool is. Now it's like I, I'm trying to pay attention. Like she's telling me about some new girl that's in class. Uh, they did some math, and she's trying to tell me the math. And like you're you're in third grade at this point. You're beyond my math level. Right. Now I you know I was okay at math, but not this kind of math. Right. Like like my older daughter tries to like she asked me for help on her homework, and I was like, oh sure, no problem, I'll help you out. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like. Uh, I'm, I got to tap out here. I got to tap out. This is beyond me. I don't even know what's going on here. Like you got three different variables in here. Like this X and Y is gone. It's like X, Y, Z, Q, and S. Impossible. Yeah. It doesn't have a solution. It doesn't have a solution. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? If you fail, you fail. I understand. All yeah. right. <laughs> like it was a good run. I, I mean, always want to tell them like, you're never going to need this <laughs> ever. It depends. I mean, they could need it. I mean, it helps with like figuring out problems later on in life. I, I know I, no one's writing down the X six times whatever equals Y seven. No one's writing that down, but you kind of figure out, okay, I need to make a connection here. It, it, the concepts think, kind of carry, don't they? I think the most compu- complicated math you're ever going to use is like, would be like maybe 
the same variable on either side of an equal sign on an equation. So is the variable is the same or, but probably not even that. It's probably like the most complicated math I use is like speed time distance. Right. That's the most complicated I ever get, right. get to. And for most things, like I got a buddy who's an airline pilot. The most complicated thing he does is aside from like center of gravity, mm-hmm. which is all just moment arms and stuff like that is, is a uh, fuel burn. So it's like, okay, we're going to use this burn to this at this setting to this altitude. Then we're going to be at this setting. So it's like, okay, if people flying airplanes are only using that, like, okay, I'm good. I'll survive. So we speaking of math, like we went to back to school night at the middle school because we got a middle schoolers now, and we go and first periods math. I'm like, crap, I gotta start with math right away. Yeah, you know, it, like think I'm gonna get a quiz. Right, he's just gonna slide it over and say, "Okay, let's see what you got." The irritable bowel starts. Right, yeah, yeah. I'm getting the grumbles already, <laughs> and so somehow I forgot how it came up because, of course, I only half heard stuff. But he was like, "Oh, someone asked about calculators," and he was like, "Oh, well, they're not going to use calculators." And my mind was just like, "What are you talking about? You're gonna make them all do it all in their head?" Yeah, like old. Are we doing like old hieroglyphic like style? I'm like, damn, like, this guy's no joke. He's going to teach him actual math at this point with no calculator. I mean, I can't do anything without a calculator. Mm-mm. I can barely add and subtract without a calculator yeah. at this point. I'm I'm that, my, my brain has regressed that much. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, I, I almost felt like I was going to, I was going to go back to my daughter that night and just be like, it's good while it lasted. Yeah, you're effed. <laughs> Cause she's like in that advanced math. Yeah. And I was like, this guy was like, we're going to do a topic a week. And there's a quiz every week. And sometimes there's a quiz on a Tuesday and you're going to do another subject and do another quiz on a Friday. I'm, I'm just like, she definitely got her smarts from her mom. Because this is not me. <laughs> you can't get angry. Right. Like, screw you, buddy. I'm not doing any of this. <laughs> right. right. For, like, I was getting, like, like, he was doing it to me. Like, right. I was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> nope, nope. I'll have you know, sir, I'm doing none of this. Right. Well, that, well, yes, sir, because we're here for your kid. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I just and then like I I didn't like, middle school I guess has just changed because as we kept going from teacher to teacher to they're just like and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this I'm like I don't think I did any of this shit till high school like, yeah I, what what are we doing here I just remember how much I hated middle school oh yeah like I hated every minute of it um so I, I in fact when I think back like I don't have one single like fond memory of anything that occurred in middle school now there's stuff that happened during that time frame that was fun and cool but nothing actually in the school building or involving the school so like i hated i seriously hated every minute of it i was not a fan yeah um just like i don't know if i'm a fan of this bourbon what is it which one is this one so we are drinking the ragged ranch signature bourbon i like it it's not bad um, it's just the Virginia straight bourbon whiskey. It's good juice. <laughs> it's a 90 proof. It's not a very high proofer. I'm getting, a, I get a weird taste on right off the bat when I, when I put it on my tongue. So I'm going to try, I'll try another sip in a bit, but I don't know. This one's iffy out right now on me. See, I'm drinking it on the rocks, which I normally drink it neat. So maybe the rocks are just, I'm not picking up everything I normally would. So maybe. I, I mean, I, I've drinking this on the rocks before, but I mean, obviously, it's at the it's almost at the same level as the Four Roses, and I've been I I kind of swig off of that every once in a while. Yeah, I've been heavy on to the uh, what the Old Forester eighty six. Mm-hmm. I've been knocking back that low proof. I've almost kicked a bottle of it. Wow. Which I mean, look, the bottle's been there for like five months, yeah. but um. One of the reasons I started drinking it was because a friend of ours gave me another bottle of it. So I'm like, well, I, I can't have two in the house, right? So I'm going to start drinking this. Um, I've really been, like, I forgot how much I like the low proof Old Foresters. Um, and I do like the Old Forester 100 too. See, I haven't really messed with bourbon at all since we did the taste test episode. Mm-hmm. And mainly it's because it's summertime and I'm at the pool all summer when I'm, and it, it, that's just beer time. Yeah, it's hard to, like, so, I, I, yeah, I'm kind of with you on that, like. I'm I'm not much of a summer bourbon person. Yeah, and I don't know why. It's light and refreshing. 
Like it should, it could be a. You summer could also thing. mix it with things like ginger ale. Yeah, I haven't mixed much. I think now that we've been drinking it, kind of like straight. Yeah. I feel like mixing it's kind of like, I think I think the the manliness kind of like. Oh, I don't want to. I'm not going to mix it. I've been drinking it straight. I can. See, I love a bourbon mule. What's in the mule? What's the mixer in the mule? A mule is ginger beer and lime. Okay. So think, you could you could probably do ginger ale and lime and kind of. Oh yeah. Well, so we call that a Stalingrad mule. <laughs> so like a there's a Moscow mule, which is, and then we would use just Tito's and diet ginger ale. <laughs> So, so Tito's is vodka, though. Yeah, yeah. But a bourbon mule is just a Moscow mule, but it's bourbon instead of vodka. All right. Your so, your your knowledge on the the drinks are way above me. Yeah, but that's, I that's I really nice. enjoy. But the problem is, ginger beer has a shitload of calories in it. Like it's even Sugar. it's even more so than ginger ale. Mm-hmm. Now they make diet ginger beer, which eh. So, but yeah, no, I really, I was a big, I was big into mules for a while. I never got so big that I had the copper mule cups, mm-hmm. but I did get pretty big into them for a little bit there a couple of years ago. I may and, try this with ginger ale. Just to give it a try. Yeah. See what's like. like it. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I was doing, I brought, I was drinking the diet ginger, no, yeah, it was diet ginger ale with just a uh, bullet. And it was fine. So, speaking of school, let's go back to school for a minute. So, I probably did the dumbest thing I could have ever done in my life. So, last spring, when my youngest was playing softball, one of the members of the PTO board had a daughter on our team. Nice lady. Very nice. And the, the the president of the PTO was leaving. Her two-year term was up. She wasn't going to do another term. And so she was like, you should do it. You should be the PTO president. <laughs> and I was like, eh, I don't know about that. And I held off and I held off for weeks and weeks and weeks and finally... We got to the summer, like right to the end of the season. And she was like, nobody signing. No one's volunteering to do it. You should do it. She goes, it's not that much work. It'd be fine. And I'm like, so I talked it over my wife. I was like, do you think we got the time commitment? Can we do think we could do this? And Because there are going to be some nights I got to go to meetings and whatnot. And she's like, well, I think you'd be all right. And so I volunteered to be the PTO president. I'm probably the only guy in America. Everyone probably thinks you're gay. Probably. I could, I should, I could play that up. Yeah. Like, you walk into a meeting, hey, <laughs> let's get this meeting started. <laughs> Party people. <laughs> be like, I know your wife. Right, right. Shut up. <laughs> I'm a, I'm butch, all right? <laughs> She's a beard. Right. <laughs> um, and so, first, first month or so was fine. Because in the middle of summer, nothing's going on in school anyway. And then all of a sudden, it's like, hey, we got to do this. And hey, we got to do this. And hey, we got to do this. And oh, by the way, we got to fundraise. And all and like whirlwind, right? Yeah. And then my my least strength is reading and learning rules <laughs> and regs. So mm. I've had to like read this booklet on how to run meetings. And Do they do all this stupid parliamentary procedures? Yes. You got to do the first and the seconds and well, all this other stuff. I, I don't understand. Like... So I'm I sit on some boards and stuff like that, and it's like they're doing all. We all know each other here. I second that. Anyone? I. Uh, <laughs> can we just leave? It's not 18th century Britain. Right. Why are we doing this? Yeah, like we're just we're pretending now. Yes. Like where's my wig? <laughs> yes. Like with powder on it because this is dumb. Like give me. Let's just leave. We're, I don't need someone to. No one wants to be here anyway. Yeah. And now I have to get someone to second the motion to leave. Mm-hmm. to adjourn let's just leave right yeah I, I don't like that and so and, and the, it, being the only guy on the on the board and there's four other ladies and they're all very nice uh plus the principal who's a lady very nice and the mm-hmm. vice principal is a, is a guy also very nice um 
I've got to remember a lot of times, like, some of them are friends of ours. Mm-hmm. Um, and some I just met, and they're very nice, though. And I can't just be like, what the fuck are we doing here? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is dumb. Right? Or, like, it, it, like, there are certain things, I guess, like, the past president took care of, but no one bothered to tell me that they did it, mm-hmm. and, like, I should do it. And so it's like, how was I supposed to know? Like, like I didn't pay attention to anything the PTO did before this. Right. So why would I know it's supposed to happen now? <laughs> so for example, like the other day, they were like, oh, we're going to, are we having the the family fun fall day? What's that? So last year was a thing like the kids could go play games at the school and they had the Kona ice truck and the kids could play like the fun games. And it was a pretty neat thing. And I guess they had the vendors there as well. Um. And I, I remember going, but I didn't put two and two together that it was like a PTO thing. Mm-hmm. And so when she said it, I was like, oh, that was that was a good time. Uh, who sets that up? You do? <laughs> she, and they were like, well, there were two ladies that do it, but they're not going to do it unless someone reaches out to them. And in the back of my mind going, I'm like, well, why doesn't anyone reach out to them? <laughs> and then they're all probably looking at me going... Because that's you, you dumbass. You're <laughs> supposed to reach out to him. Like, how am I supposed to know that? Yeah. Um. So like, it's just stupid stuff like that. It's just like I don't even know what I'm doing here. I think the expectations are a little bit high, outside of me. Like <laughs> me, I know what my expectations are. Me, right? Like I'm doing it because no one else signed up to do it. Yeah. Right. So when there's, no, it's like kind of like when you get elected with no under, no other candidates around. Does anyone really expect that much from you? Right. Because. It wasn't like you had competition. I mean, a ham sandwich could have got elected here. Right. Like, you got in by default. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's like, if a ham sandwich ran against me, I would have backed out and let it win. <laughs> Voted for the ham sandwich. Yeah, I, 100%. <laughs> but, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to make, uh, I'm trying to, because I get, I get it. The kids are who benefit from this. And the teachers, and you want teachers to stay. You don't want teachers to leave. So I'm trying to do my best to make this thing work, but. As soon as my, like, I'm not even three months into my first year. And you're waiting for the second one. I can't wait for the end of my second year because I will be out so quick. Well, that's, so, you know, you see all these movies where it's like the underlying plot of the movies, like <clears throat> the one mom running for PTO against the other one, <laughs> like, like bad moms, like that's part of the plot of bad mom, and I'm, Look at these, like nobody volunteers to run for anything. No, you know, like I don't understand how. <clears throat> like nobody wants to do these things, so I don't like the people that do do it. It's cool because like those people are like the ones that are going to step up, like step into the breach and handle it. Um, we had a problem. I think we talked about this maybe on the last episode about you know the baseball. They had enough coaches for they had enough kids to make X amount of teams and no one volunteered to coach them. And I'm like, this is nuts. So then I'm already coaching a uh, a team. I'm like, I'll do it. And then it's like, well, no, I'm already doing one. Uh, someone else can do this, mm-hmm. you know. And there are people that have much better baseball pedigrees than I do that could certainly step up and coach a team. But it's like, this is insane. How? These people just want to get. They just want to drop their kids off, and roll. But they'll also so, be the first to complain that you fucked up. Absolutely. But I have. The, I hold the trump card. Mm-hmm. You could answer the same email I did. Yet here we are. <laughs> right. So now the team I'm co- the head coach of. They're awesome. Like they're like the kids have so much fun, and I'm like, thank God because I'm like I think I think I was more nervous than they were. You know. So. Um, because I've coached T-ball and assisted on rec, but this is like the first like baseball team I've had. So you were probably watching the the Tom Amansky video, yeah. in, on VHS <laughs> just to get you ready, <laughs> and then like thinking like, hmm, or I'm going to end up like Tom Hanks in League of Their Own, <laughs> 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 Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it. But I was just shocked with like no one here. Now they eventually had people, but again. The guy that stepped up to coach coaches everything. And it's like, he shouldn't have had to step up to coach this. Right. There are other people who could have stepped up and done this. But, you know, he and I were like, and then 
some other dads like stepped up when they saw him. So I was able to kind of take more of a of, of a support role than a pri- than a lead role. But it's like it, it, this shouldn't have taken the, the two guys that volunteer for everything to get other people to to come in. Right. So. Yeah, and unfortunately, I mean, I think people get complacent, right? So when I, I we had a, a a fall cleanup day at the school. And we put it out there. Now, granted, it was the Sunday before school started. Mm-hmm. Because we, and the reason why we figured most people would be home, right? And we basically said, "Look, we're going to be up there from nine to 11. Come up with rakes, leaf blowers, weed whackers, your hands. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Come up, help us out. Half hour, fifteen minutes, an hour, two all two hours. Great. I don't care any of it. Just yeah. come." Now, we got 400, roughly about 450 families that send kids to the school. Mm-hmm. 26 people showed up. Now, when I say families, you figure of those families, I'm going to guess that maybe half are two parent. So you probably got six, 700 people, adults. Mm-hmm. You probably got, say, another 100 in kids. That could have shown up. So let's say you got 800 people. To only get 26 people to show up baffled my mind. Mm-hmm. And of course, so then I, I go online because at the point I was, I was just steamed at that point. And I'm new to this, right? I'm not, ex- I wasn't exactly a, uh, a huge volunteer before this. Um, but my wife was, so at least someone from our family did something. Yeah. And so basically, I, I kind of went online and I was like, hey, look, here are the numbers. We got 455, 450 families. We had 26 people show up. I said, that's less than 1% show up for this thing. I was like, even if we had 2%, that's 50 people. We get double the work done. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just like, if you can make it, make it. Like, like don't think you're not needed. Because that's the thing. Everyone thinks that they're not needed, if whether it be baseball or softball coach, or someone else will do it. Yeah, it's oh, they always think someone else will do it. Well, and the problem with like baseball is that somebody else always does it, right? But the, the somebody else is often the same somebody else all the time. Yeah. So they're like, oh well, you know, someone will do it. Well, that's why. And then <clears throat> that's what it was this fall cleanup. Yeah. It's the same families that do it. Yeah. So, it, so then I was like, I, after I wrote it and I, I put it out there, I was like, I, I even tried to take some of the blame, right? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry it was late notice. I'm sorry. The, it, I, I'll do better next time. Part of it's on me. I'll make sure it's better. I'll make sure, whatever. And, and, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, fucking horse shit. There's no way you couldn't tell me there weren't 26 other people that weren't doing shit at that time Mm -hmm. that couldn't have shown up. My question is this, though. Why do you guys... Doesn't the county... Shouldn't the county be doing that? No. Why would they? Like, I mean, now I know for a fact that, like, grounds is part of the facility's maintenance budget. Like, it's in there. Mowing. Yeah. Mowing. Mow it all. (laughs) Well, the pro... So... I, and I've watched a different county, mm-hmm. but I've watched the county mowers come through and they just mow every, everything. Like that Jamie Johnson song, Mowing Down the Roses. Yeah. That's them. Yeah. And I'm cool with it because mm-hmm. that's just one less stupid plant for me to take care of. Yeah. So we were like weed whacking some of the weeds that were in the concrete because mm-hmm. they don't take care of that. Yeah. Uh, we, we turned the mulch in like a memorial bed, which mm-hmm. th- that was kind of another thing i was pissed off about like this is supposed to be a memorial which one is that where is that so it's the one right outside the front doors it's where the benches are oh. and like the learning in the lending library yeah so like people can sit there under a tree and it's supposed to be a memorial um and there's three benches that were gifted from other from three fifth grade classes mm-hmm. and there's a mulch bed underneath it and there's like the wood that surrounds it like an enclosure right mm-hmm. the woods warped as fuck the mulch is paid for by the PTO. It's not maintained by the county or the school. 
Right. Um, the benches aren't maintained. The exterior of the building, for fuck's sake, isn't maintained. There's a there's a no trespassing and warning sign on the build on the building. Mm-hmm. You can't read half of it. It's worn off. The gates to the back entrance, the the metal posts that go into the ground are half rusted away. Oh, those big things that swing to block it off. Yes. Yeah. They're half rusted away, and. It's like, if you don't take care of this stuff, you're going to end up having to replace it, which is yeah. going to cost millions more. And it seems to me like that's the mentality of this county and the school is we're just going to build it, let it fade away for 25 to 30 years, and we'll just build another one. Yeah. Whereas if you just took care of this one. You wouldn't have to build the other one. You wouldn't have to. Like, we went inside. I did a tour of the inside. There's like whole mar- There's holes in the vinyl flooring. Vinyl flooring is cheap as fuck. You're telling me you couldn't have ripped, the, you can't rip this out during winter break. Mm-hmm. It, it basically, you got a week. You tell me you can't rip this out and lay new vinyl tile. And that building's new enough. There shouldn't be any asbestos in it. No, there's none. Yeah. No, no, it's I'm, not like it was built in 1950 it, and the floors are asbestos and the walls are asbestos. Like the walls everything. are cinder block. Yeah. The walls are, the, the floor, I mean, I'm sure that vinyl floor has been replaced in the last six years. Mm-hmm. But now it has holes in it. Yeah. Fucking replace it. Like you're talking about vinyl tiles, they probably cost like seven cents a pop. They, the through the whole floor, maybe a thousand. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like the PTO supplying new chairs for the teachers' lounge. Like the county's not going to provide that. Mm-hmm. The school the school's not providing that. Yeah. Like what the fuck are we doing here? Mm-hmm. And so when it comes to the exterior of the building, <clears throat> they don't. Manage the trees, the bushes, the, the the landscaping is done on the cheap. As yeah. far as like, so like they got like a bush with an enclosure, but it's got that crap green trim mm-hmm. that goes around it. No, it, it looks like garbage. So if the zero turn can't get to it, it's not getting done. It's not getting yeah. It's, 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 it's only gets all weedy because yeah. the mower's not weed the, cutting the weeds. The up. zero turn can't chop the bush down. <laughs> and then the other thing, like, you look at it. We have no grass anymore. It's all weeds and crabgrass. Well, that field is garbage. Right. Well, it's not only, so that field is actually run by the county. Okay. The, once you once you take like three steps away from that soccer net, that or, or that uh, the backstop from the softball or baseball mm-hmm. field, that's school. So the the school's mowing contract should be taking care of that. Mm-hmm. But it's just a mowing contract. Yeah. There's no. I was like, because I asked the vice principal, I was like, when was the last time this was like aerated and seeded? Yeah. <laughs> Never. Yeah. We're just so I think their 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 methodology is we're just gonna let the weeds take over. At least it's green. Uh huh. I'm like, yeah, you. This is good. There's there's an old saying in sports: look good, feel good, feel good, play good. Mm-hmm. Right. Part of the first part's look good. Yeah. If the school doesn't look good, one, you got teachers going in thinking they work in a shithole. Yeah. So that their attitude is gonna reflect that. Mm-hmm. Kids are gonna go in thinking. Now, don't worry, they're kids. They probably don't think too much about it. But it's like, if you gave them a nicer environment, mm-hmm. maybe they'd be more up to learning. Like they have a more positive attitude. Yeah. Now, how much does that really affect things? I don't really know. Yeah. But for fuck's sake, at least for the teachers, make it not look like an asylum on the inside. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, hey, I walked in, I got these off-white walls. The only color on it is because the principal, uh, she found some money, or she found like a grant to do an artist in mm-hmm. residency, and they painted the wall by the library, which looks amazing. But she had to get a grant outside; yeah. like it wasn't from the school board. She had to go get a grant for it. Yeah. They they had I think a teacher painted one of the walls with a rainbow. Just uh-huh. to, it just added some color. It makes it look a lot nicer. But the rest of the school is basically asylum gray. Yeah. Well, it's. Well, I mean, if you look, there's a meme that went around, and I follow a lot of teacher stuff just because of my wife and what she does, but, like, it says government-funded classroom, and it's like a desk and nothing, and it says teacher-funded classroom, and it's all, and the money, is true, the money that my wife puts out for her students and for her classroom, like, why the, we pay taxes, why isn't the, they, why aren't they using it, oh wait, because we have to pay hyperinflated salaries of administrators and people at the top. And that's a hundred percent true. Yeah. Now, this new superintendent is demoting people and getting rid of positions. So I'll I'll give oh, is him. He, oh, is he really? I haven't yeah. heard about that. Yep. But Good for um, him though. Yeah, because it's like 
you, you look at Baltimore City. Baltimore City, City spends more money per student than anyone in the state. And it's like, you know, super much. Like, they're top five in the country. Yeah. By the way. Year over year, they're top five in the country. Yeah, but per, it all, it, per student. Yeah. But it all goes to administration, administrative salaries, little stupid units they create. I'm sure a bunch of it gets stolen. Oh yeah, you know there's all kinds of fraud and stuff going on and kickbacks. So like, put the money where it needs to be in teacher salaries, facilities, equipment for the students. That's where it needs to be. Not to sp- pay some curriculum specialist no. to go to a conference in Las Vegas. Or, or the fifth highest transportation department guy who's making 120 grand a year. Yeah. You don't need five people in the transportation department to make five to make 100 grand. I'm sorry. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. Maybe the top guy. Maybe yeah. his deputy. Mm-hmm. The rest of you, you're capped at 100. Yeah. Um, it, it's amazing to me. And the other thing that this superintendent is doing is he's trying to raise teacher salaries. Mm-hmm. And the, here's the reason why. So, one, I heard that the state of Maryland is almost is mandating a, a minimum level of pay for teachers. Mm-hmm. But the other one, he looked at the surrounding counties. And there's, I think, Baltimore County, Howard County, Montgomery County. No, not Montgomery. Uh, PG County, Calvert County, and Kent County. They all had higher pay than us. Yeah, and Montgomery County does too. Well, Montgomery County pays a ton. Yeah, but it's and the other thing is all those counties touch Anne Arundel County. Right. So you could come here and start out at what sixty, or whatever. I don't, it I don't is. think it's that. Even high. if it's fifty six, whatever the hell it is. Yeah. We go to work in Montgomery and make eighty. Right. So you put up with the shitty traffic, or you just. And a lot of these people, these new teachers, they're fresh out of college. Okay, go live in, you know, with go live in an apartment in Bethesda with a couple of your girlfriends, and have fun and go to DC on the weekends and do whatever. Like, of course they're going to do that. Like, what? Well, I think the disparity was so much. Like, it wasn't that close. Yeah. So it wasn't like, well, you can go with a higher cost of living in Montgomery County or Howard County, or you can go to Anne Arundel. And and the amount you have to pay on rent is roughly the same, or, or the amount you have after rent is roughly the same. Yeah. Because you're making less here, but the the rent was less here. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you still have the same amount of money in your pocket. Yep. Or or less, right? So I got to admit, when they got rid of the last guy, I I was neither here nor there, right? This guy, I mean, now that I know he's trying to trim out the the board edu- board of education budget mm-hmm. at the top, yeah, at the top of the administration, I'm all for that. He seems to be raising teacher pay as fast as he can because he's got to go through the county council and get the county's approval on that. Yeah, and that's not always easy, mm-hmm. but he he's at least trying, and yeah. I appreciate that. Um, and then. At least from what I've seen, he's at least making tours of the schools. Yeah. So he he just went to our elementary school. Mm-hmm. He's been to other schools. He went to yeah. he went to the middle school. He he's making the rounds at least. He's not mm-hmm. just sitting in his in his office. He's visible. The other guy, I don't remember seeing him do all this. No. Um. So, you know, it, everyone was like, "Oh, he's coming from Kansas City." What is he? Look, man. It, as far as the year and a half he's been here, I don't have a negative to say about about the guy. And the other big thing. And he's doing this before the Maryland state mandate. He changed the reading program. Mm-hmm. For, and we talked about this from that Sold the Story podcast. Oh, yeah. And this year, so this wasn't, the full change wasn't supposed to happen until next year. Mm-hmm. From what I understand, quietly, they've kind of told the teachers we're not using the old method. And they also, they're also changing the math curriculum, too. Yeah. That's, so, that's a new one. I hadn't heard yeah. about that, but the reading one was the one that got me the most. That they they were not going to use guided reading. Yeah, like they weren't supposed to transition out of it until next year. Mm-hmm. But he was like, I, apparently, it came from him that, hey, this ain't did, on the books, but we're not doing this. Did you listen to the so speaking of sold a story? They did a 
up, she did an update. Yeah. Did you listen to that episode? I didn't yet. Okay, so I did. It's wild. So one of the big problems is that, like everything else, the two competing methods to teach kids how to read have become politicized, shocker. Yeah, naturally. And so the um, the uh, guided reading, whatever, uh, Fontes and Pinnell... Lucy Calkins, Lucy Calkins, Heinemann Publishing has become the progressive one, and phonics is the conservative one. So, if you identify as progressive, you can't support the more effective program because that's not doesn't match the ideology. It is so. It, I'm like, so you're allowing your stupid ideology to impact how children are educated, like. Right. This like, is ridiculous. You you would rather handicap a kid through life than give up this political talking point. Yeah. Like well, they already that's proven shocking. That. They already proven that. But that's shocking yeah. to me. Yeah. It's like these other states and now don't worry, we live in a blue state. Mm. Like a very blue state. Like the bluest of the blue. Close. The fact that we had a Republican but governor. We're for not Massachusetts. It, yeah. <laughs> Come on now. We're California. We're New York. Yeah. We're, we're not there. We're close. We're like junior level. I don't even know if we're New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, I mean, this it, it, this was the state legislature that did it. And maybe they did under Hogan. Maybe this was Hogan's doing. Mm -hmm. But the state passed that law back in 2000, 2020. Okay, so that would be Hogan then. Yeah. It was either 20, 2020 or 2021. And, but it was, but it was, it was all blue in the House and the Senate. Yeah. From, from the state. Like, they're the ones that passed it. Now, maybe he kind of did a handshake deal to get it done, but I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe it's just bipartisan. Maybe they actually, maybe politicians did something actually right for the kids. It's, hey, a broken clock's right twice a day, so. Right. I don't care how it happened, <laughs> yeah. but it happened. Um, and the kids are going to benefit. Yeah. And I'm all for that. Look. I'll call out any politician who does wrong by people, mm -hmm. but I'm also going to praise them when they do something right. Yeah, and don't remember, uh, it's just I mean, so rare that they actually do anything. Oh right. yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Which is why we don't praise anyone yeah. often, right? I mean, come on. Um, but I mean, as far as this superintendent goes, I really don't have anything bad to say about the guy. Uh -oh. In fact, I'm, I, look, I shouldn't even put it in that negative term. I think he's done a good job. Yeah. And until he does something that proves me that wrong that he hasn't done a good job, I'm going to keep saying he's done a good job. Yep. Um. And like I, I and I mean you you kind of have an ear in the school just like I do mm -hmm. in the in the schools. You know, yeah. I really haven't heard much bad. I, I haven't heard like normally there's always rumblings of something bad from decision making or whatever. Now I've heard of, of of issues lower than him that he probably wouldn't know about, yeah. like a department level or something. It, you know, someone's mismanaging something, but yeah. he probably doesn't even know because it's so far so not beneath him. But it's it's he's so far removed from it. Yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 it he never get no one's reporting it up that high. Mm -hmm. Um, so I hear about some stuff in that regard, but as far as the decisions he's made and the stuff that he's trying to push, now granted the so the state might have mandated some of this stuff to be put in place later than now mm -hmm. but i give him credit for doing it early yeah and i give him credit for trying to increase the pay whether he did it because it's going to be a state mandate or whether it's just because he you know, he realized we were losing teachers and good ones and not the like we, we could have been pulling in newer ones but we were losing the season ones and yeah look i'll be the first one to say teachers that have stuck around and done poor jobs should be let go but the reality is you lose a lot of the good ones that just get fed up mm -hmm. when they don't feel appreciated. Yeah. And that's the same way in any industry. Yep. And so for him to do something to at least stem the tide, um, by just I mean, he's giving retention bonuses for people that stay, even yeah. because I don't I don't think they gave him all the money in the steps that he wanted. So it's like screw it, I got this extra money over here. You know, and he works it out with the union. Yeah. And yeah, you know, as much as I dislike unions most of the time, I feel like this union, at least now, has started to step up for its employees. Mm -hmm. Not all of them, but some of them. Um, but I also think that the union 
probably didn't have much pull in this regard. I think he had to do it. Right. Because he was just going to lose teachers. Well, I don't understand why the union isn't going after him. Like, hey, you like you have to pay more. We're, people can easily walk. They can make more money working from home. Right. Like, when McDonald's is paying $15, 17 dollars an hour. It's 17 Starting 17 Starting 17 Don't get donuts. It's 17 starting. Yeah. When when DD is paying that, mm-hmm. and to start out as a year one teacher is fifty six, so you're only you and it ain't, ain't eight nine to five. Yeah, no, like, and a, so many, and that's one of the the, the things like it, it, it irritates me so much when I hear people that don't know anyone. It's like oh, well, they only work from eight to two and they have summers off and blah blah. You should see the way these these people work. It is not one of these like like. Things and the money, the the effort they put in to making a good experience for these kids. That's not required of them. They go above and beyond it, whether it's time, money, money and time. You know how many classrooms I've set up. You know, like that's all stuff. Like I'm not get, like we're not being compensated for my time. You know, and right. like the boys come in and help do stuff. Like they're not doing stuff in their classroom. Well, and it's, so, not that, it's not just that you're helping to do something in the classroom. It's that you're taking time away from your home. Yeah. Like, no one's, you're not getting compensated for that. Your wife's not getting compensated no. for that. Mine doesn't get compensated. Yeah. Like, everyone just expects it to be done for free. Yeah. Oh, they do it. They, they, they but, then they do it. They, but then they go and they shit on them. Right. Every chance they get, they say, oh, and we're this far behind and that far behind. One of the, the worst things that, so all this testing, first of all, it's all bullshit. Second of all, we test, in the United States, we test everybody. So when they say, oh, X percent of high school seniors are not proficient, okay, because we tested all of them. In France, once they hit 15, they either get put on a college track or a, like, trades, know, track. trades or, like, you're going to learn how to, like, not be in jail track. Right. They only test the college track kids. Right. They don't test the other ones. We test the kids that come here that don't speak English, that don't know how to read and write in Spanish. And we're expecting them to pass a reading and writing test in English? Right. They don't speak English. I mean, you're talking if a 10th grader comes from Mexico or from another country, doesn't, let's say it's not Spanish. Let's say that they're coming from China, where, wherever yeah. they come from. They're here legally, everything. Yeah. They go to the public school. They can't speak English. They're pr- some of them are illiterate in their own language. Yeah. But they get tested, and that zero or that ten of out of a hundred yeah. counts against the average. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. Places like Baltimore City, I mean, you're you're passing. What was it? Ninety five percent pass with zero. Yeah, but but and then Baltimore City, like those kids have never been outside of West Baltimore. Yeah. So they know how to speak English. Right. You know, so there's no reason why, like, and the thing, like, when you have the kid that comes from a foreign country and is illiterate in their own language, but then the very next year is not only, like, literate, they're now speaking English and reading and writing English, well, they did it. Baltimore City school budget couldn't couldn't do it. Right. So, you know, it's it's definitely, but that first year they're here, those numbers are all the special ed kids. They're tested. Other countries don't test them. You know, they're testing their best and the brightest. So it's like, let's have a big track race to see who the fastest people are. Jamaica sends Usain Bolt, <laughs> and we send, the United States sends me and you. Right. Like, who's got the fastest, lo- the, the, the lowest overall times? Not us. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, way to shit on us. <laughs> like, I mean, look, I know it's true, but damn. <laughs> I mean, I want to, um, no, I can't. I was going to say, at least the one thing I could hold my own. I can't hold shit. It would, he'd be waiting with, like, on a bark of lounger, sipping Mai Tai somewhere by the time I got done with that race. Oh, my God. Yeah, if, <laughs> if I finished it. He could probably do the race four times before I did it once. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm only doing 40s. <laughs> He's doing the 4 by 100 by the time I get done with the 40. <laughs> <laughs> he got the whole relay done before I get done with the first leg. He ran every leg of it. Right. <laughs> I, he, he just lapping me. 
I'm <laughs> looking at him going by like, no, yes. stop. <laughs> Make it stop. <laughs> um, so that, I mean, that's the back to school experience has been, I, I mean, look, I got to say, I, I think it's been better at least this year for me. And I don't know why. I just feel like there's been less issues than mm-hmm. in the past. I mean, look, last year we had the bus issue where the, we were missing like three or four buses from the elementary school. So everybody had to drive their kid to school. Yeah. So that probably sucked. This year we got all the buses. There's none of the traffic issues. Um, first year for middle school. Like, I'm not too worried about the academics part. I'm more worried about the kid, like the kids getting bullied. Like today, they're riding the bus home. And there's like, I think there's about eight girls that are in sixth grade, just in our neighborhood. So they get all get on the bus together, and they're all friendly. And there's none of the girl drama yet. Yeah. Um, well, I know. I mean, these girls have been friends for a long time. They've all like, known each other since they were babies. So for the most part, and, and don't get me wrong, like the, they've they've kind of they, they there's little clicks within the group now, mm-hmm. but. It's not like clicks where like they're unfriendly with each other. Yeah, they're still all friendly to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, they just happen like you know you, you find best friends, right? It, it kind of yeah. happens. So they're sitting on the bus on the way home from school, and some goon, some eighth grader, I don't even know if it's a boy or a girl, decides to throw an empty Gatorade bottle toward the front of the bus, and it hits a girl in the back of that. Or no no it, the Gatorade bottle missed and hit next to the it hit the seat next to my daughter, but someone decided to throw a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I'm hoping it was in a bag, but it hits it hits one of the girls, right? Nobody says shit because you can't. The younger ones don't say shit to the older ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bus driver just wants to get them off the bus, whatever it may be. Yeah, of course the parents are probably shitty people. Didn't raise the kid right because they're throwing shit on a bus. Yeah. Because they think they're hot shit. Um, and of course it's it's what the fourth day of school. I was like, fuck, we gotta. It, it's like okay, this is an eighth grader. Raise your fucking kid. Yeah. But this is so. This is the only issue I've seen so far. The teachers seem nice. We it was weird they did back to school night like, like, the third day of school. Hmm. Like. You haven't even done anything. What are you going to tell me? Yeah. And so they basically just go over how they're running their cl- classroom. And it was fine, though. Um, <clears throat> but no, it, the thing I was always worried about with middle school were the shithead kids. Because there's always guys like, look, I, my first year of middle school when I was in sixth grade, I basically spent the entire year trying just avoid fights. Mm-hmm. Because there was always someone looking for a fight. There was someone always trying to think they were big, tough shit. Yeah. And they were looking to fight somebody. Mm-hmm. So I pretty much just kept my head down, just try to stay out of the way. Yeah. Um. And then, and then I moved out of that area and went to upstate New York. And that's where I went to seventh grade and eighth grade. Um, it was just much different. It wasn't, I mean, there was some of that, but there wasn't a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's this area, but there's definitely just it's like all right if something happens to my kid do I have to go beat up an eighth grader and their, and, <laughs> and and his dad yeah like look okay you raise a shithead kid now there's some consequences for it yeah you know it, so are you taking the ass whooping for him right or am I gonna take him and then fight like <clears throat> who's take who's taking the baseball back to the knee yeah <laughs> that's essentially what's going on yeah. Not, I can't fight. Yeah, I'm taking a baseball bat. <laughs> I will. I don't have to fight. I don't have to fight fair. It's it's a street fight. It's yeah. not. It's not fucking it's not in a, a ring. UFC, yeah, it's not a cage no. fight. There's no rules to this. Yeah. So it's like, all right, you can either teach your kid not to be a shithead, or you're gonna have problems. Mm-hmm. And shit, I don't even gotta fight you. I'll just in the middle of the night slash your fucking tires. <laughs> I'll kill your fucking car. Right. I don't really care. Whatever whatever I can do to cause you some fucking misery that your kid is causing my kid, it will be done. And you can do whatever the fuck you want to me. Because yeah. you're a grown ass adult. But you're not gonna fuck with my kid and your kid's not gonna fuck with my kid. Not happening. Because mm-hmm. my kid's a nice kid, she's not gonna do anything. Yeah. 
She's that. She's and that that's, kid. And that's the problem. And that's where I blame all this stupid zero tolerance nonsense. It's enabling, empowering the bullies. And we've talked about this before. When the th- when the threat of getting punched in the mouth is real, mm-hmm. things get checked. When you shoot off at the mouth and you might legit get punched in the mouth, you don't shoot off at the mouth. Well, by having all this zero tolerance stuff, the bullies know, and they don't give a shit anyway, that the good kids aren't going to stick up for themselves because if they do, they get in as much trouble as the bully did. Right. Would get into. So it's like, it's just, it's, 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 it's like, it's like doing the whole, um, the, the whole, uh, uh, gun free zone. You know, this is a gun free zone. So the criminal's like, oh, <laughs> easy pickings, right? Easy targets. No one here is armed. The law abiding people aren't armed. And I'm obviously a shithead criminal, so I don't care about the sign. So, when you do that zero to zero tolerance stuff, you're removing the the any check on the bully because there was getting punched in the mouth. Well, now the good kid's not going to punch him in the mouth. So I've always had a problem with it, and it's lazy. It, it removes them from having to make a decision, right? So they can say just like when people lean on policy. Oh, that's policy. Okay, well your policy's stupid. Like the kid that just got. Did you see the the viral the the video that's going around the kid that had the Gadsden flag on his backpack? Yes. And first of all, that flag's been around forever. It's, it doesn't have roots in slavery or the slave trade. Um, in fact, the U.S. Navy working uniform or ACUs it's an optional patch. Um, it's called the uh, the U.S. Navy First Jack. It's like the one of the first flags they ever flew, and that's on their uniform. That flag actually flies off the USS Constitution. It flew on every commissioned warship from 2002 to 2019. She's just, oh, well, that's policy. Your policy's wrong. You are wrong. You're enforcing bad policy. But because you're a coward, you're going to lean on the policy. Because it removes you from having to make a decision. Was it the teacher or the administrator in the video? I don't know who that was. I think it was an administrator or a counselor or something. So, but the thing is, like, the they were wrong. It's not correct. So, now, have certain people that they might find poli- politically disagreeable taken that flag and used it as, a, as their symbol? Sure. But don't tell me that it comes from slavery when it doesn't. Right. Well, I mean, <clears throat> but the counter argument to that is, look at, look at what happened with the swastika, right? It used to be a pagan symbol. Mm-hmm. It, it, it was, Every culture on Earth has that same symbol, right. but because it's been because it's affiliated with such a bad individual, that's in a bad movement. That is now the symbol of that movement, right? But, but the pagans don't get it. They don't get to say, "Oh no, it was ours first. <laughs> yeah, no one's nope. That that's a swastika. Yeah. That's the Nazi flag. Yeah, and, and I get, I understand the theory behind that argument. Yeah, but that is a huge stretch. So, yeah. just to find people that that you disagree with politically, well, but that's what they do anyway. Right, they're Nazis. Well, so at this point, I mean, everybody's far right at this point. Yeah, and, you know, it, I mean, it, like Jimmy Dore is far right. Joe yeah. Rogan's far right. Yeah, like do you know how many times on on Twitter or X or whatever the heck you want to call it now? Like whenever we make a point, and people can't actually argue against the point, they literally say, "Oh, look, these guys, th- these guys listen to Joe Rogan." Yeah. Like, okay, what? So we listen to someone who sits down with actual experts and listens to them. That's horrible. Yeah. Right. Someone who sits and listens to people is horrible. Well, having your ideas yeah. challenged is horrible. Too. That that's also horrible. You know, how dare you? So, you know, because they've taken their ideas are part of themselves, their, their identity. So now, because their ideas are part of their identity, when you question their idea, they're, I've had plenty of bad ideas. Most of my teenage years and 20s were full of bad ideas. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm not afraid to say, yeah, that was a dumb idea. You know, hell, the name of this podcast was initially a dumb idea. It was. Yes, it was. <laughs> so, 
But to go so once so once a thought enters into your head, it becomes a part of your identity, and you're married to it. Like that to me is the most ridiculous. Because I've had a lot of bad thoughts that you know, like you know, someone pisses you off in line, like man, I want to punch that dude in the back of the head. So if someone say, hey, you know, that's probably not a good idea. today in the line at at the supermarket. I need to buy half and half. So I'm standing there. Uh, we had just left baseball practice. My kid's standing there, in his, dusty in his baseball gear. You know. Perfectly established procedure. The one bank in the self-checkout line is out. The other one is operating. So whoever's kind of milling around there, if they were there before you were, that's the line. This guy just walks right past me to the empty. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I wasn't standing here or anything. I told you what happened one time, and, right? No, I, so tell me after this. So, oh, sorry. So my idea that, had, that popped into my head is I wanted to smack, and, like, and you look like a douchebag, I want to smash his dumb head through the scanner. Like, scan this motherfucker, right? <laughs> but that was a bad idea. I didn't go through with it because it was a dumb idea. So, but because that idea form is that now part of my identity? If anyone, anyone questions that idea and that thought process, like, they're questioning my very existence? Like, no, that's dumb. Well, it's because people, I mean, it, people have formed their friendships around these ideas i mean it's it's the idea behind identity politics right mm -hmm. it is my identity these people are my friends because this is my identity yeah and if i say word one against what what the belief was mm -hmm. my friends will turn on me and i won't have any friends yeah so i won't have my tribe right you know and and some of the the big one of the biggest fears in humans is being alone yeah. It's really scary when you, like, for example, when you lose your job, you're alone. Mm -hmm. uh, your your future is uncertain. Your safety net is gone, right? Yeah. And so these people, and it's the same on the right and the left, if they say anything to agree with the other side, mm -hmm. they're so afraid that the people that they've become just entrenched with and friends with they're afraid they're going to be ostracized if they have if they actually say what they think with some common sense and agree with somebody else yeah and, and that's kind of where we're at right now well and that's that's true because i have some i have friends that are all across and you know we just but i'll disagree on a lot of things but i'll tell you that i'm much more likely to show my support for left wing or more liberal ideas in front of my more conservative friends that I'm much more comfortable doing that than talking about conservative ideas that I support in front of my liberal or lefty friends. Yeah. Because they are, they will snap in a heartbeat. The reaction is completely different. Conservative guys are like, yeah, that's dumb. I'm like, yeah, but you know, it makes sense to me. Like, okay. Or, or they'll have a civil conversation with yeah. you. They won't yell you down. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it, it, if you if you if you say something against someone who's left leaning, it's in, like you get instant disgust from them. Yeah. Like rather than talking about it to see if maybe you have a point, mm -hmm. or just to hear where someone else is coming from, it's instead it's just, ugh. What do you mean? Yeah. How do you how do you believe that? I can't believe you believe that. Mm -hmm. like, well, slow down there. Maybe if you listen, you would yeah. understand the other point of view. But they they don't. It's instant. It's instant. Just offense. Yeah. How how quickly can I be offended that you don't agree with me? Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to argue the point. I'm just going to tell you you're a shitty person. To attack you. Yes. Per and that's the one, like, how can you tell when someone's lost an you know, argument when they switch to personal attacks? Right. You know, and, and that's, so, like, I just don't even bother to engage. Because I have friendships that I really value mm -hmm. that are built on other things that, eh, I just won't talk about that with that person because I don't feel like going down that road. And they may react to the point where, you know, you're dead to me. The, pro and, the problem is, though, they try and interject that 
into a conversation because mm-hmm. they just they want you to validate them so badly yeah. and and then it becomes you're the one that has to stay quiet mm-hmm. where they can keep saying this shit to try and get you into the conversation and they know and they know when you don't engage then they either drop it or they'll try and insert it again later yeah it's very subtle and if you then engage and say well i don't agree with you well why what do you mean yeah it's like it's like an it's like an instant trigger mhm like we were like we were sitting at lunch one day and a, f- a family member was like i don't see how anyone votes for trump <laughs> now look i don't vote for trump but I all I said was, and I said it very calmly. I said, "Well, I can I can see how someone would vote for him," and it was like I is I I lit a candle. Oh yeah, I lit the firecracker by just by saying, "Well, I see how they could." Mm-hmm. And I I and then of course then I start I try to like like diffuse the situation. I was like, like I'm not saying I voted for the guy, but I'm just saying I can see how someone would. Yeah. And that didn't help. But but what's what's the here's the thing, like why should you have to defuse anything? Right. They're they're the one that's unstable. Yeah. You know? And Because you want to keep the peace. Right. And that's the thing, like you know, when you and you can ask the same question like, who the hell would vote for Joe Biden? You know? And but I know there Plenty of people who would vote for Joe Biden, mm-hmm. you know, that, and they all give valid, good reasons why they would. Um, hell, in 2016, I probably would have voted for him, but all depends on who's running against. Yeah, I guess. So, you know, um, but that election was promised to Hillary as part of the deal to make her drop out in 2008 against Obama. Like that was the whole freaking thing, you know. Um, that's people don't remember Bernie. Bernie was all was really in the hunt for that in that primary. Oh yeah, season. And then people also don't remember how the DNC kind of screwed Bernie's camp. Mm-hmm. Oh, with, they with, screwed him big with Debbie Wasserman Schultz. You know, it, people don't remember that. They and and Bernie kind of fell into the background. He did not press the issue like he could have. He could have split that Democrat Party. And two. Yeah. Because of that. He could have exposed all of it even more, but there was a lot of media suppression with that. Yeah. Um, they never really went into the full detail of how the DNC screwed Bernie mm-hmm. by withholding files, withholding donor information. I mean, they they did not give him any help whatsoever after he started to pile up a couple wins. Yep. And... Well, they don't. I don't think a lot of people on the left realize how many people that were going to vote for Bernie probably end up voting for Trump. I, I yeah. think there were probably quite a few because they were just so pissed that that the Hillary campaign would do that to a fellow Democrat. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that kind of made for like they always talk about the never Trump people. Yep. Well, I think some of the Democrats I were saying never Hillary because of that situation with Bernie. Mm-hmm. That was bad. That, that People don't remember that. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, after the 2016 election, there were uh, uh, House uh, House of Representatives uh, Democrats that contested the election just like they did this uh, in 2020. What are we in now? Yeah, 2020. Mm-hmm. Um just like the Republicans did. And then all the Democrats said, oh, you're insurrectionist, you're, you're treasonous for doing this. Well, it was funny because someone put a compilation of the House of, uh, the, the people from the House that were, were doing the same thing. And oddly enough, um, just like Mike Pence was gaveling them down in 2020, Joe Biden was then the vice president, was gaveling down yeah. the Democrats saying, we're not doing this. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're doing the same thing. Yeah, but now all of a sudden it's now it's awful. Yeah, it's like so. I don't know. I mean, 
I don't know how we got from to this from back to school. But, yeah, you know who knows. It's good. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be this show if we just didn't go off on a tangent and end up somewhere else. But we hope you like the show. Please like, subscribe, comment, share. Uh, thank you to Brian Chilling of Long and Foster Real Estate in Annapolis, and Cheers and Spirits uh, in the Arnold Station Plaza for all your uh, wine and alcoholic beverage needs. We appreciate you listening. Please share with a friend, and we hope to see you next time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>